Hey guys, welcome back. So over the last, I want to say three months, I've had this like newfound appreciation for my alocasias because I've been growing a lot of them in my living room and they've been putting out new leaves and they've been just so cute looking. And when I look at them, I'm like, I barely did anything to do that. That was pretty much all them. All I did was water them and I've been appreciating just how low maintenance they've been. I won't say that alocasias are easy, to make them thrive and grow huge, but they are very low maintenance because they don't vine. There's no need for moss poles. They hate being repot. They can sit in that same vessel for a really long time. They like no drainage. They like self-watering. They can sit in water. And I feel like the only real thing you have to really do for them is to make sure they don't have spider mites and just wash them off every now and then. And really the most difficult allocations I've ever owned are all dead. So they're not even here anymore. So what I have left, have been really low maintenance. I just have to water them. So before I add any more allocations to my collection, I thought I'd just show you my entire collection as it stands now. It's very small, it's a humble little collection of just seven plants. I'm looking at the plants right now and all of them I've had for years. Some of them are looking better than others. So I'm gonna, as usual, kind of uh, go back and forth between like the nice looking specimens and like the, the struggle ones and of course I'll be talking about how I care for them anything kind of notable about my journey with these plants so the first one is the one that inspired me doing this video in the first place this is my alocasia maharani this one has been growing so cute in my living room and it's been so freaking easy so this is a hybrid of black velvet and mellow I, I i honestly feel like this took on pretty equal parts of both although in just first glance it looks quite a lot like a mellow but over time i've been able to tell the difference between this and mellow and one of the main differences if it's very subtle if you just took away the color and the texture it looks like a black velvet at least to me and it has the purple backs of black velvet, but it has that gray kind of rhino textured leaf of the mellow. It's, I find not quite as gray, definitely not as light of a gray as mellow. I actually really want a mellow. That's one allocation I'm planning to add to my collection just based on how much I've been loving this one. So this one, I think I've had it for like, I wanna say two years and I grew it from like a sprouted corm. And this one actually has a second little baby plant in here. And one reason why I say this one's easy is because, let me just take it out of this pot, it's kind of heavy. I, I used to have this in a, like a coffee cup, I wanna say. And when I went away on vacation last summer, I was repotting plants like well in advance just to let the, the roots settle and me diagnose any issues before I leave. But this one was like a very last minute one. I think I repotted this either the day before I left or like two days before I left. And I just like took it from one, it was in pond, so it wasn't like a substrate transition, but I went from one to the other. And typically for me, alocasias will kind of drop a bunch of leaves at that time, even if it doesn't like drop the roots. A lot of times they will drop the roots, but this one, when I came back, it was just flawless. And I was like, okay. And this is a no drainage death deli cup. Luchuza pond is amended with perlite. I think this is like a mixture of Luchuza pond and homemade pond, just like a casserole of pond components. Um, this one it probably could do with a repot fairly soon just because there's like a good amount of stem above the substrate. If I remove um, some of this like papery husk, um, it could probably root a little bit more. At the very least, I will just top it up with a little bit more pond so it can root a little bit more up here. But this leaf has just been such a welcome little addition to my living room. This white powdery stuff. Okay, so this is um, remnants from my spider mite spray. So as a lot of you guys know, I've been dealing with spider mites. They're in my living room and they're in my plant room out in like open shelving. So this one had spider mites and a lot of my alocasias at one point had spider mites. So I had this like concoction of 99% alcohol with peppermint castile soap and tea tree castile soap that I got from Charmaine. And I didn't even dilute that. I just go straight in with the 99% because I've been using that mainly for mealy bugs, but I doubled it up as a spider mite spray. And I don't know why, but for some reason this leaf had this like residue from that spray and I cannot get it off. I've been washing it so many times. I'm like trying to rub it off while I'm washing it and it always dries like this. But I've used the same spray for almost all of the plants that you're about to see and the, the, the white powdery residue doesn't stay but for some reason I can't get it off this leaf which is a shame because it would have been 
so perfect. And it's just put out this leaf. And this might be interesting for anyone who is like kind of scared to use that like alcohol spray for pests because it is kind of drying. Um, this one, I randomly found two little muley bugs on this unfurling leaf. And then I just went in with that spray. Again, it's not diluted. It's full strength, 99% alcohol with Castile soap inside and no damage, no damage whatsoever. It was like kind of right here. Another thing I really appreciate about this, which is kind of true of black velvet as well. I never owned Mellow, so I can't speak for Mellow, but I really like just how compact it is, like how short the petioles are. Like when I had a black velvet, I had to get rid of it because it was just infested with mealybugs, but like those petioles are so short and it's like this little bush and it's just like very cute. It's like a nice like short little plant to make room for tall plants behind it. So this one's sitting on a shelf right at the front and then I have taller ones behind it and it's created like a, a, a pretty enjoyable little wall of leaves. So yeah, my love of this one has made me determined to obtain a mellow. Here is another one of my all time favorite alocasias. This is alocasia scalprum. This plant has kind of gone through the ringer and it's definitely seen better days and it used to be much bigger than it is now. But I do think by summertime, it's gonna be growing large leaves. I had it in soil for God knows why. I don't really grow alocasias in soil. In fact, I think that was the only alocasia I ever grew in soil. You'll see later, everything's in pond or leka. And it just wasn't, it would grow well for a while and then it would have these like long stretches of growing tiny leaves and seeming like it was struggling. So over the holidays, so this would have been like two months ago, I moved it from soil to pond. It's very algae ridden, so you won't be able to tell, but this is pond and this is my usual pond mix, um, Lachusa pond, Orchiata and Perlite. And I knew it was going to kind of die back a little bit, drop some leaves, and it did do that. I think it dropped at least one, possibly two leaves, but it has rooted like beautifully in this. And this one, it was actually like the most uh, pleasant transition, I want to say, uh, for an alocasia in my experience. Usually they like really throw a fit and like all of the existing roots rot for no apparent reason. Sometimes when I'm going from like the same substrate to the same substrate, like like a smaller pot to a bigger pot, it would just drop all of its roots if there's like any sort of disturbance there. So this one actually took the transition really well. It started growing again, but it's two flowers. <laughs> so there's a flower here and there's a flower just poking out. I don't know why alocasias tend to flower in pairs. Does anybody know why? I don't know why, but I'm just waiting for the next new leaf. This is one of the few alocasias that produces corms for me. I, I don't know what it is, but I have a hard time getting my alocasias to produce corms. And I would love to propagate them more and grow more babies. I think corn propagations are just so, so delightful, but so many of them just don't want to produce corms. And this is one that I, I think I harvested like five corms off of it over the holidays when I, when I repotted it from soil. So she's just a good girl. She's kind of small, but I do believe that like give it a few more months and it's going to be back to its former glory. It used to have leaves like probably this big nice like beautiful shield oh it's just such a good texture it's one of the best alocasias of all time i think like it really is so dark and so leathery and they are very tough and super leathery they do not need high humidity they i feel like they are a little bit more drought tolerant than other alocasias with like thin that those thin leaves, this is like super thick. It's super waxy as well, it can hold on to a lot of moisture. And sometimes when you see photos on Instagram and stuff like that, it almost looks super edited. Like it was like intentionally manipulated to look black, but it really is that dark. And it can take quite a bit of light. So this one's sitting in my plant room, it sits on the shelf pretty close. There's two burina bars above it. So I wanna say it's getting quite a bit of light. And I don't know how accessible this is everywhere. This was very extremely accessible here in Vancouver and I think across Canada for quite a while. I haven't seen them in garden centers for a while. I think maybe they did a whole like TC run, maybe like didn't do it again, or maybe we'll see more in the spring, but I feel like this is not that accessible in the States and it hasn't really been entering garden centers yet. I would love to know if this is accessible where you are because this is like a 
pretty easy to get alocasia here. But I will be sharing some of my little corn babies through the Northwood Tropicals live sales coming up soon. So if you're really desperately in want of one, um, just keep an eye on the NST live sales. Okay, so this one is one of my problem children. This is my alocasia fried egg. I used to just go on and on about this plant because it was just like the plant of my dreams. And then it just decided it just wants to grow all white leaves. This is actually the most green I've had on this plant in the last at least year. It grew so sickly because it is so white. So I grew this from a corm from Jing and I got this, I think, oh my gosh, it was like at least two years ago, maybe more than that. And it was like the most beautiful specimen. It was so nicely balanced variegation. It was growing really big and it was sizing up with every leaf. I'm just double checking for pests. And then it got to a certain size and it just like kept putting out white leaf after white leaf after white leaf. And I just kind of like, I kind of fell out of love with it because it just wasn't growing. And the leaves that it was putting out were so small compared to before. Like before it was probably like, it's probably like this big with like a lot more of the maturity, like the jaggedy edge that fried egg can have. And it was just really disheartening. So I just stuck this at the back of my tent. It just lives there. Because I do believe if I brought this out or tried to acclimate this out when it's this white, it's going to brown off really quickly. So I am just got it right behind my dark phoenix. And it just lives there pretty much in almost full neglect. I do water it and that's pretty much it. So one thing I was like thinking of doing is maybe just lopping it off right here and letting it grow back from the stump below in the hopes that it will come back with more balanced variegation. I just don't know if this will survive. The top really doesn't have any roots. Um, I just, before filming, peeled off a lot of like the papery husk around here. It does look like roots want to push out. I don't know. I Maybe I will just do that. I want it to return to its former glory. This is definitely a plant that I can help the white from browning by just being on top of silica, but that's not gonna make this plant any more green than it already is. So it's always gonna be very white and kind of just like weak looking. I don't know, it's so tiny. Like look how small the stem has become compared to down here. I don't know if you can see, but it's thicker down here than it is at the top. But just as an aside, um, I've been really enjoying potting alocasias like in a no drainage vessel, but a tall glass vessel because it can live in that pot for so long. And all you really need to do is have the space above it to just add more substrate once it kind of grows taller and taller. Since they hate being repotted so much, I've grown plants in the same no drainage vessel for like years before. And I have a good feeling that I could do that with all my allocations. And all I really need to do is when I plant it, make sure I plant it low enough and have it just kind of like, kind of, Kind of like the way I have my scalp room. Like it looks a little bit silly, right? Like, but there's a lot of room at the top here for more substrate and it's sitting as low as I can possibly make it with the leaves still like coming out of the pot. But once it has leaves, probably like double the size of this one, it's gonna look a lot more balanced and the leaf will hang down a little bit closer to the bottom of the vessel and it just won't look so tall overall. So I'm thinking that that's pretty much what I'm gonna do always going forward with alocasias is get it into a tall vessel. Like if it's a little baby, it's not gonna go into something this big, but it's going to be tall enough that I can leave a nice long gap at the top to add more substrate to it as it grows, just to prolong the point at which I need to unpot it. Cause this one, I, I, I found one corm in this. This is one that I cannot get to corm, but I found one corm kind of buried and I had no choice but to like take it out of the pot, fish out that little baby. But um, this <laughs> just, got so mad it just dropped a whole bunch of leaves so yeah this one's no longer my favorite just because of the way it's growing but i do wistfully think about when it was like really nicely marbled it was just so pretty and fried egg actually alocasia variegation i think is like some of the prettiest in in the hobby it's so clean and it's just like a painting you can see it better in this leaf that's a lot more <laughs> green just where it's like layered with white, it's like this like minty bluish color. So since I haven't decided what I'm gonna do with this, I'm just literally going to fill it to here with pond and then give it a good silica feed and then see if it comes back with more green. I don't know if many people have success getting it to go from white 
to more green. I've seen people's fry decks go from variegated to full green, which is like very unfortunate, but I've never seen, and I'm not really that like active in alocasia communities, but I haven't really seen like plants go from white back to like very balanced. So this is gonna get a top of a pond and then it's gonna go back to that spot in the tent. Okay, this next one is I think maybe the second oldest plant in my collection. Not plant, <laughs> alocasia in my collection. So this is my alocasia cupria. And this one has been very enjoyable to look at in my living room. It's only two leaves. It's been growing in no drainage and in LECA for, oh my gosh, years. <laughs> years. You can see how much stem is above the substrate. I actually don't know what I'm going to do with this. I have a feeling that the stem goes down to like here. So maybe I could just get it out and then just plant it like right at the bottom again. I don't know, it, but this is a lot of stem and this is quite a tall vessel. So this one I got as a corm from Jing and I want to say it was like 2020. Yeah, I want to say it was 2020 and it was like a little sprouted thing and it's been growing. I mean, it's growing pretty well. It has spider mites, it gets underwatered, it flowers a bunch and when it flowers, sometimes it'll drop a leaf. It just finished flowering two flowers. I enjoy Leka with with alocasias just because of just like you can really clearly see how much water is in there. I will say for alocasias I probably like pond the most just because I have I just like the way that the pond kind of hugs those roots and then after that I like leka and then and then soil. I think I might give soil another chance but it would be more of like a self-watering setup with no drainage. But honestly, based on how they kind of root and grow in, in pond, I don't really see any point in like trying to reinvent the wheel with it. I'm just gonna keep growing allocations in the pond. But yeah, I, I see people with cuprias and they're just like 10 leaves. It's probably multiple plants in the same pot, like a little sprouted corm, grew, grew into a big full plant and they just leave it in the same plant. I honestly don't know, but I can never get my cupria. Like since it became this size, I could never get it to hold on to more than two leaves. I have a feeling that when this leaf comes out, this one's gonna go. It started to bend a little bit and I, like I put this little stick on it just so it would face a certain way because I was trying to train it so it was like two leaves facing the same direction because this one I think it was like kind of going off the other direction facing towards the window and I was like no 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 face the light and it has seemed to do that and I probably could take this off and it'll be fine and it's looking really droopy I think it's pretty much the same as this one like this one is pretty much horizontal and it's like very very perky so these ones these ones get russo light i have a russo light in my living room and it's very strong i think it's like 30 30 watts and um these have been really liking it they've not been bleaching at all I, and i don't know if people even really like cupria anymore i've always just been fascinated by this leaf like there's just not very many allocations that look like this and when they come out they look so slimy like they look so shiny that they're like wet looking and it just makes me so happy to look at like how gross it looks because it's gross in a beautiful way and of course those purple backs are so nice but there's really nothing in this hobby like a fresh cupria leaf they just they look so wrong and so good um, but I'm pretty sure this is like in any garden center now. Anyone could get one. And this is probably one of my easiest allocations. It's had spider mites multiple times. I actually was looking at this and I was like, I see spider mites, but I think they're dead. I've also been using predatory mites on it, but I don't know if you can see. Where was it? Where did they go? It was easier to see downstairs under russo lights because it's so bright, but I think I saw some up here but I don't see any damage and I don't see any webbing and I think they are dead. I'm not sure if it was just like not washed off the last time I sprayed and rinsed in the sink, but I don't see any sign of spider mites on it. But even when it has spider mites, like I did not know they had spider mites because I wasn't seeing any decline and I wasn't seeing any damage. So it's only because I was doing a very microscopic check on all of my allocations that I see some webbing on here. So yeah, really like this one. But I never show it, but I really, really have been enjoying this in my living room. Okay, this one I think is my most difficult alocasia. This one is Alocasia watsoniana, and the full name is Alocasia longoloba var watsoniana. 
So Watsoniana is kind of like velvety and it has that forking off margin, whereas Longa Loba, like the regular one, just has like straight veins that go right straight to the margin. This one, this one had really bad spider mites. Okay, what you see on here, they're not, they're not spider mites. These are, I think they're either predatory mites or the feeder mites that are inside of the predatory mite packet. Because the mites that I get, the predatory mites, they're the Californicus they do get shipped with mites that the predatory mites can feed on inside of the packet along with like the bran and stuff. So this one used to live in my tent. I've had it for like two years. It wasn't that recent that I repot it, but I did repot it from a smaller glass vessel to this one, mainly to bury the stem a little bit lower and it was kind of like leaning out of the pot. And since then it was moved out of the tent into an XO, so not, not fully room conditions. And then it got spider mites. So this one is in full rehab mode and I'm looking at the, the stem and it's like not even trying to push out a leaf, which is really sad. I really like this alocasia. It's so bat-like and it's so dark. I mean, it's not the best leaf to show because it's all curled and damaged, but I'm gonna put in a photo here, here of what this plant used to look like. It's so black and it's like velvety and i just love the way that the veins kind of fork off when it reaches the margin and it also it it's faded now but it also has like a aubergine kind of dark plummy purple back so i'm really hoping that this one either produces corms or recovers this one also has never once produced a corm for me i would love for it to produce corms because i think this is a beautiful plant but i don't know what really what to do more with it. I think the only thing I can do to get it to kind of wake back up is get it under brighter light. Because right now it's in my EXO, which has two Barina bars above it, but it is kind of shaded by other plants, so it's not directly under a light. So I think that would be the only thing I would change is to give it just more light hitting the leaf and hopefully it will wake back up in the summer or in the spring when the temperatures come up again. But it was really happy when it was in my tent and I just ran out of room. But this one really does not hold on to leaves. This one is like one, two. So my friend um, also has this plant. She's like, I can't get it to have more than one leaf. And she's really good at growing plants. So I feel like this is one of the more difficult ones. I'm just grateful that it's still alive. Okay, so this next one is actually my oldest allocation in my collection. Um, <laughs> It doesn't look the best, but this is my Alocasia Silver Dragon. I've had this since 2020 and I hold on to it not because I love the Silver Dragon so much. I think I actually like the Green Dragon more and I do find the Dragon Scale ones are a little bit more finicky and they just kind of like, there's a lot of ups and downs. They'll have to be healthy and bushy at one point and they'll just like throw a huge fit. I keep this because I spent way too much money on it. I spent a hundred dollars on this in 2020 and if you could probably get it for like nothing now and it just makes me sad. So I refuse to get rid of this plant. I repotted it. It looks really sad because I, I repotted it over the holidays. Like I think it was maybe late November, early December. It was in LECA, but it's like the classic terracotta LECA balls. And it was in a like a slitted orchid pot with an outer pot that was a glass vessel. And I was just like this, the slitted pot situation. I don't want to do that anymore. The roots were escaping out of it. So I just moved it into a bigger glass vessel into this like new LECA that I've been using. I've been getting this from Nostra Tropicals. It's kind of like this taupey kind of very airy LECA. It weighs much less than the classic terracotta le LECA. And I I've been really enjoying it. So I just thought, you know, I feel like this plant could move substrates and not throw a fit. I was wrong. It threw a huge fit. I probably lost like four leaves. And only now is it starting to perk back up. It was just this droopy, like every leaf was like this. But you can see now that a whole bunch of roots have started growing. Pretty much all of the old roots have rotted off. But looking at this, I'm betting that it stinks pretty bad in there. Why can't I smell it though? doesn't stink. Unfortunately for me, this is one of those alocasias that corms a lot, which is not something I'm like looking for is more silver dragon. 
it's cute it really is cute and when i first got it i was just like in awe of it it really does have nice texture it's so like almost like dry dry and matte and it's really cute and when it has big leaves because what at one point i think when i first started using great white made a humongous leaf and that was around summertime i keep it because it's really really low maintenance it sits on my living room shelf it's kind of like at the back just to get it away from the light a bit because i do think that this one does bleach and i water it once every three weeks at best and then every summer it comes back with like cute new leaves that are like a lot bigger so i just keep it around for that reason but it's really not my favorite alocasia if this were to die i would not be replacing it but since i spent so much money on it i am i am holding on to this okay last but not least is one of my all-time favorite alocasias i've ever owned this tall guy is my alocasia sandariana nobilis i did not know i wanted this plant actually i knew about this plant for quite a while and then so, so my boyfriend showed me this plant it came up on his Instagram feed um, or his like explore page or whatever. And he was just like, can we get this plant? It's so cool. And and the only reason why plants show up before him is because he like supports my socials. So he's just like liking my stuff. And so Instagram now thinks that he loves plants and it shows him more plants. So he was like, it looks like it's from Rocco's Modern Life. And I was like, what the heck does that mean? And this is pretty much what he means. Like things in Rocco's Modern Life, it's like, wavy and like rounded on the edges so one summer there was like a, a echo genera pop-up at one of the local like botanical gardens and there were like other vendors there and one vendor was selling this and i saw someone post on facebook just to show like what's going on at the sale like what plants are available and i was like we gotta go i got it it's not been the easiest alocasia but it's been so fun to grow it doesn't grow very fast and it doesn't hold on to many leaves. I've been growing it in pond for a while, but when I first got it, it was in this like very cocoa husk heavy soil mix. I don't even think there was actual peat soil in there. I think it was just like coir, cocoa husk. I think there's some charcoal, maybe some bark. Um, and I didn't love that for my alocasias. So I moved it to pond fully knowing it was going to die back and it did, but it came back and then it got spider mites. And this one, I, I feel like it's just like a really tall alocasia. Like, look at this petiole. It's so tall, but also at the same time, when this leaf grew, it grew underneath some other plants. It was kind of, I think it was my patriciae. This used to live in my exo, so it was like shaded by my patriciae with like really big leaves. And it kind of grew through the leaves towards the light. So now I have it in my living room and it's under the Russo lights, which are very strong. So I'm hoping this will kind of shorten the petioles a little bit. And I would just love for this plant to hold on to like three leaves. That's, that's all I ask, just three. And again, I think as with all my alocasias, it's gonna kind of wake back up in the summertime. So this one I got because of my boyfriend and um, this is the plant I keep growing, not just because of him, but if I hadn't fallen in love with this plant since owning it, I would still continue to grow it because he really likes it. Cause this is um, bred from Amazonica. And when I first saw this, I was like, this just, just looks like Amazonica. Obviously a different shape, but it kind of just looks like Amazonica. But over time, I just really grew to love this shape. And because I love this one so much, I caught a Jacqueline, I think it was like a year and a half ago. And that thing just died. <laughs> I tried to move it from soil to pond and it freaking died. So I am on the lookout for another Jacqueline, but I want to try it from corm. I want to wake it back up in the pond that I want to grow it in or get a specimen that's already growing in pond because I don't want to kill another Jacqueline. That was really sad. I bought one specimen and me and Charmaine shared it like because there was I think four plants in there. So we just split them in half. I gave her half. I kept half. All of them died. And I really love this shape and I would love for this plant to corm more because I do think people should own this. I don't see this being sold very often and it's only corn for me twice. So one I sent to my friend Par and then one I just very recently last week plucked it out and I gave it to Charmaine because she's been looking for one of these as well. But really, I don't think people really like this plant and I don't know why. What's not to like? It's so dark. Such a fun, funky shape. So that's my whole collection. Like I said, I want to add a couple more to my collection this year. For sure the Mellow, for sure the Jacqueline, 
but <laughs> under certain circumstances. I don't want to get one from the garden center that's in soil because I'm just going to kill it again. And a past wish list of mine was the Heterophila Dragon's Breath. This plant here, it's not high on my wish list, but I do think that one would be really fun to grow. And I feel like that one might be an easygoing one based on what I've seen from other people. And I would, I'm, I'm coming around to maybe getting an, a variegated alocasia, but at the same time, I refuse to pay the price for variegated alocasias. It's so beautiful, but I just don't trust the, the stability of that variegation. And a lot of times, alocasias that are variegated, like the fry deck, will pass on the variegation through the corm. So I just think that it's a matter of time before they get a lot more accessible. And I do think that the value put on them is not because they're really hard to get. And it's not anything to do with scarcity. It's really just based on like the sheer demand of that plant because it's undeniably beautiful and I can see that people want to pay a lot of money for it. I just don't value variegation as much, but if I were to get a variegated alocasia, I think I would probably go for something with pink variegation, like black velvet would be really nice because again, I really enjoyed growing my black velvet when I had one because it was so like compact, bushy, and it was like quite easy going. So I would probably put in terms of variegated alocasias, like black velvet or maharani or one of those right at the top because the pink variegation is just way too cute but i don't see the price of variegated allocations coming down this year i don't know why i think it's going to take at least another year before it starts to get like you know get one for like 30 to 50 dollars that's the kind of range that i'm comfortable with for alocasias because i don't really often kill plants but i have killed my fair share of alocasias anyways that is it for today it is kind of a short video i'm looking at the the recording time right now last week's video which was my anthurium care video really took a lot out of me not like physically or anything but it just like i really juiced my brain for that one and i just i feel like i wrung everything out of it and it's just not a lot of power in here so i think i'm just still in brain recovery mode so a little bit of a shorter video today but thank you guys so much for watching i hope you enjoyed it i love you so much and i'll see you in the next one Mwah.